If you have an Immersion RC 600 milliwatt audio-visual transmitter, you've probably run into these common um, issues in a crash. The SMA connector was ripped from the transmitter, and the inductor was damaged during the crash, breaking the shielding and uh, rendering it useless. We have two grounds and a signal with a small trace that extends to the back of the capacitor. I'm going to use this area to create a new trace and pad to connect the SMA signal to the back of the capacitor and remove the trace as well. Here you can see I have removed the enamel on the two ground pads and I have removed the enamel on the tr new trace I'm creating for the signal. I have separated out and cut through the trace as it connected to the rest of the ground so that it is standalone. I will eventually remove the rest of that enamel. As you can see, there's a little bit there. Uh, creating a nice pad uh, to bridge to the back of the capacitor. I have sped up the following video four times to shorten this considerably. I am currently using my soldering station and a small tip is to not overheat the SMA connector to remove the old pads uh, from the SMA connectors to the board. And then wiping them off onto the sponge. That ended up being the easiest way to get them off. And removing excess solder as I needed to. To prep the SMA connector to connect back on to the board. Then I'm going to start tinning the newly created pads on the board in preparation for the SMA connection. I will now uh, tin the new pads on the board and prep for fitting the SMA connector to the board. I end up putting too much solder on the pads and go back and clean it up, but that's not shown in this video. I bridged to that capacitor with the uh, solder, made it nice and clean. Because the SMA connector was damaged in the crash, I'm being very careful in adjusting the solder points to straighten them and align them for better connectivity to the um, new pads I've created. Take your time to create the best fit for the SMA connector to your board prior to doing any soldering and direct connection to the board. I will now solder the SMA connector to the board. Sorry for my hand being in the way. In the next clip, I will remove the inductor. I'm using a small tip as to not overheat, to not overheat the board. Make sure to take your time to take your time and thoroughly clean these pads in preparation for uh, soldering your inductor. I must apologize for not videoing the soldering of the inductor. It's a fairly simple process in which you uh, do a small amount of tin on the bottom of the inductor pads, hold it in place, and hold heat to one side, and it'll attach on one side. Then you do the same thing on the next, and slowly go back and forth till it's seated properly. Um, 
not leaving your soldering iron there too long as to damage any other components. The final product turned out pretty well. Uh, works great. Have had no issues. I decided to epoxy around the connections at the SMA connector to the board, which will allow for a very strong connection over a long period of time. And I also re-shrink wrapped it with some clear shrink. I used, I believe, three-quarter inch shrink on it. And it looks almost stock, except for uh, the area where the SMA connector attaches. I also trimmed out around the dip switches to be able to change channels more conveniently. Thank you for your time.